Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this lecture today. Today we are going to start a new topic uh, that is on democracy and you know democracy is widely used term and everything now in contemporary uh, era that is uh, good or virtuous is often associated with democracy. But when we think or theorize or try to define what is democracy, it is the contested. Um, concepts and uh, yet it is very central to any theorization of politics uh, or government or state in modern times. So, all states necessarily at least profess that they are democratic, but how far they are democratic is something that is constantly debated, contested and challenged and therefore, even when you see in modern era, democracy used as a kind of uh, legitimizing idea. It is not really a universally accepted um, uh, norms uh, or criteria uh, about what does it mean to be a democratic country or a democratic society. Some of these debates and discussions we will do uh, uh, over the course of two, three lectures on uh, democracy. Today we are going to basically uh, look at the understanding or the kind of definition of uh, democracy by uh, many scholars and then we will uh, look at uh, the evolution of idea and how in the modern time it becomes a kind of all pervasive uh, idea even when the meaning and uh, um, the understanding of uh, democracy is far from settled. And then we will discuss particularly direct and indirect form of democracy and more specifically the idea of procedural and substantive notion of democracy. So, so these are some of the things we will discuss today. In the next lecture we will discuss different models of a democracy and then we will follow up with the challenges and criticism to this idea of democracy. So to begin with this idea of democracy is central to any discourse on politics and government in modern times. So, uh, any uh, discourse about politics or state or the government in modern times revolves around the idea. But that does not mean there is a kind of settled understanding or a universal consensus on what this idea means. And therefore, there is lots of confusion, lots of challenges to understand exactly what democracy means or what does it mean when we say that we are democratic. Nonetheless, this idea is very much central to any political and government uh, related discourse in modern times. And of course, as an idea, its roots can be traced back to the ancient times. So, in Greece or even in India, we have many Sanghas or many republics where there was uh, a kind of democratic structure of decision making and so on. But as a all pervasive legitimizing idea, so much so that even the military junta or undemocratic government and the outright dictators or autocrats also tries to legitimize their rule in the name of democracy. So, this kind of uh, resurgence or reaffirmation of democracy as the legitimizing idea of time is something of a recent development or a modern development even when the roots of this idea can be traced back to the ancient time. So, the word democracy is derived from the Greek roots which means demos and krasia. So, demos means the people and krasia means the rule or the government. So, democracy literally means rule of the people. So, uh, democracy is about a system of rule 
which is based on the governed or that is a kind of legitimizing process for a democratic government that the functioning or the existence of government is based on the consent of the people. So, a democratic rule by nature means a uh, rule by the people for the people of the people as one of uh, US President Abraham Lincoln defines it. So, this is a kind of literal uh, meaning of the term but it um, actual functioning or the process of a democratic government you see a lot of challenges to identify which government is a truly functional uh, democratic government or which is not. So, it is not easy to define what is democracy and some of the following definitions gives us a sense of contested meanings and understanding of democracy. So, democracy according to Greeks is the government in which people rule over themselves. So, it is a system of uh, governance where people rule over themselves and there is no external and outside authority which governs them. Aristotle considered as a perverted form of government. So, Aristotle talks about many forms of government starting from um, authoritarian to autocracy, uh, then he goes on to define polity as the rule by many and he regarded as the ideal form of government then democracy which he regarded as a perverted system of governance. So, uh, for Aristotle democracy is uh, a perverted form of government. Herodotus says the democracy denotes that form of government in which the ruling power of the state is largely vested in the members of the community as a whole. So, the root or the basis of ruling is in the larger community as a whole in the society. Uh, the most quoted and uh, uh, often repeated definition of democracy that you often hear is by Abraham Lincoln, the US president who famously said that democracy is a government of the people and all these three things that he says about democracy matters. So, uh, democracy is a government of the people, by the people and for the people. So, the very constitution of a democratic government is of the people that means representative of the people. The government is run by the people themselves and not uh, uh, other uh, uh, groups or communities. So, by the people and for the people. So, the very uh, rational or the objective of government is to work in the interest of or for the benefit of uh, the people. So, this definition of uh, democracy as rule of the people, by the people, for the people give us a broader or comprehensive understanding of democracy. But when again comes to assessing the actual functioning democracies in the world, we face a lot of challenges in terms of even when uh, a functioning uh, democracy follows some certain procedural parameters, the actual effect, the actual outcome of that democracy may not be uh, uh, democratic. That we will discuss in procedural and substantive notion of democracy. Now, moving on to uh, this Bryce definition of democracy. Now, democracy is that form of government in which the ruling power of a state is legally vested not in any particular class or classes like in aristocracy and so on, but in the members of the community as a whole. So, the each and every member of that particular community together gives the legal basis of a democratic state and government. Democracy writes Mezzanine is the government of the best and the wisest for the progress of all and through all. So, this sanction or the basis or what we can also call the consent is very crucial for the very legitimacy for the very existence of uh, a democratic government which must function on the basis of uh, this idea that the constitution of the government or a democratic uh, rule is the result of the consent of the each and every member of uh, the society. So, for a very long time governance is something that is regarded as the uh, task or responsibility of very few section or very few classes in the society. 
for the first time democracy radically altered such conceptions of governance by few by asserting that uh, a democratic government must function on the basis of every and each member of the government for the benefit of the people. So, these two things first the process of electing a government or forming a government should be the result of the participation of every member. And second, once the government is constituted, it must function for the behalf of, uh, of everyone or for the benefit of everyone. That means, the common good or the good of the people is the objective of the government. So, the constitution and existence of the government rests on this idea of the people and that is very central to the understanding of democracy. Similarly, Professor Seeley talks about democracy is a government in which everybody has a share. So, in this form of government, say in monarchy, only the monarch will have the stick because it is his monarchy. right? Similarly, in uh, say aristocracy, it is a particular class in the society which interest is at stake in the government. But in democracy, everyone's, every single citizen of a democratic state has a stake, has a share in the uh, decision making or in the administrative process of that state. According to Dicey, democracy is a form of government in which the governing body is a comparatively large fraction of the entire nation. So, the question of representation where the uh, governance is in the hand of those who are comparatively large fraction of the entire nation and not representing a particular class and section. This we find that democracy is understood as a procedure, as an ideal. So, uh, the biggest challenge in defining democracy is that it is understood as a procedure. So, we can say free and fair election, rule of law, constitution, political parties. If these exist in a country, it may be a democratic uh, country. So, it is a procedural thing, but it is also an ideal. No country can claim to be truly democratic country because there will be some undemocratic ways of doing things, undemocratic uh, power that is exercised, coercive dimension of the state and so on. So, therefore, as an ideal, it remains a kind of guiding principle where all the societies or modern societies tries not just to govern themselves through the democratic or elected government, but also internalize the value of democracy, which is against hierarchy, any kind of subordination and domination, any kind of arbitrary use of power and so on. So, democracy in that sense remains an ideal or as a guiding principle for many societies or individual or collectivities in modern times. So, it is a procedure, it is also an ideal and more than that a system of rule that is very difficult to conceptualize and that is the most difficult part of democracy. As we, uh, I have said that many undemocratic or military junta also legitimize uh, their rule or excesses of their rule in the name of uh, uh, democracy. So, as a procedure, as an ideal and more than that as a uh, system of rule, the uh, definition or the interpretation of uh, democracy is a very difficult uh, challenge. Now, we can make a sense of what does uh, democracy implies by making a kind of contrast between democracy and autocracy. So, democracy is by definition rule by the people, for the people, of the people that means rule by every member. So, in a democratic rule, all member of the society or the communities are expected to participate or have a stake in the function of the world. Autocracy on the hand it is either ruled by one dictator or the authoritarian person or by few, but certainly not by everyone. So, autocratic rule by definition is about rule by one person or few uh, individuals or small sections in the society. Now, if we contrast the democracy with autocracy, we will find that democracy is ruled based on certain rules, customs and procedures, whereas autocracy is more about command or obedience. So, there will be absolute hierarchy and the very functioning of uh, autocratic rule is based on command and obedience, whereas in a democracy, 
you have the rules and procedures. So, the functioning of a state and its machinery must follow and abide by rules and procedure. The second, democracy ensures participation of most of its population, almost all. So, each member of a democratic citizen, so say a right to vote, that is the most crucial understanding of political participation in modern democracy. And there are criticism to that, like Rousseau and others we will discuss later on. But certainly the right to vote is given to the every adult member of a particular community of a particular above the particular is. Now, this right to vote ensures the maximum political participation in the uh, governance uh, in a democracy or electing the government in a democracy. So, it is about participation of every member or every eligible adult uh, member in a society. So, democracy is a rule by participation. Whereas, in autocracy we have non-participation or very less participation of people in decision making. So, the people are subjected to certain commands or certain orders and they are expected to uh, abide by uh, or to uh, obey those commands and orders. But in the decision making, the participation is either less or none at all in comparison to democracy. Again, democracy is the uh, government of the citizen by the citizen and the citizens are right bearing citizen. That means, a state and the government must protect certain rights of the individual citizens and this protection of rights gives the state certain limits, certain restraints. So, for example, in Indian constitution you have fundamental rights. Now, fundamental rights prohibit the state to formulate certain policy which contravenes, which takes away the rights that is guaranteed under the fundamental rights chapter. So, uh, democracy recognize and protect certain rights of the citizen, whereas in autocracy you have the loyalty. So, you benefit or you lose on the basis of your loyalty to the commander, to the higher authority or to the dictator. So, that is the uh, contrast between autocratic and democracy that you can have. So, democracy is something more than a system of rule or it is not just about the procedure. It has both procedural and substantive aspect which we will discuss in the later part of this lecture. It is a method or procedure to arrive at a decision. So, democracy is a method or procedure through which we arrive at a particular decision, but it is also about a set of normative value and behavior. And this normative value and behavior through which a society approach and participate in collective decision making is something which makes uh, democracy more than a system of rule or more than merely a, a mechanism of governing the society. It is something which is about uh, creating new norms about exercising the power or legitimacy of that power. And it then further from a system of rules goes down to uh, shaping the behavior of individual and groups in the society. So, the deepening of democracy is a term which uh, can explain that how democracy is not just about the system of rule and procedure and so on, but it is also about how individual or groups in the society themselves imbibe the democratic ideals or democratic principles and that leads to creation of a good and better society. So, democracy as a system of rule is based on this idea of rule of law that is very crucial for a democracy that it must functions within the rule of law and its legitimacy comes from the consent of the rule. So, a democratic government exists and their existence is legitimate so long it is based on the consent of the people and how consent is acquired? through the periodic election in free and fair manner. So, a regular free and fair election is regarded as essential feature of democracy. It also signifies a free and open society which allows all kinds or shades of opinion or vices to be expressed or to be heard. 
so the characteristic of a democratic society in comparison to undemocratic and autocratic society is it allows all states of opinion or voices to be expressed and heard in the public now if we uh, look at the evolution of the uh, concept uh, this worldwide prevalence of democracy is relatively a new or recent phenomena so we were not democratic still today lots of countries and societies do claim to be uh, democratic but uh, they are in substance or even in the procedural sense not exactly a democratic state however as an idea democracy is now widely prevailed or even a legitimizing idea of our age now this uh, becoming of legitimizing idea or wide prevalence of democracy is something of a recent phenomena more precisely the most population of the world claims to be governed by a democratic uh, government is a post second world war phenomena so only after the post uh, second world war most of the population in the world or the rulers claim to be democratic so for a very long time people were very suspicious of democracy and used to equate democratic rule with say mobocracy rule by mob or inefficient rule because the ruling or the governance is regarded as something which re requires certain expertise and not everyone is capable of ruling or governing and therefore for a very long time the democratic government was equated with the government of inefficient people or it's a mob rule mobocracy it's not uh, something which is good and virtuous so for a very long time there was a kind of suspicion or apprehensions about democracy and even the most progressive liberal uh, thinkers and scholars refrain from calling themselves as a democrat so democrat was equated with the mobocracy and inefficient rule for a very long time it is only recently that now we associate or attach everything that is good and virtuous with democracy but for a very long time democracy was equated with this idea of mobocracy or rule of mob or inefficient rule even in modern times its usage is not without problematic and challenges so it is true that it has become a legitimizing idea of our time so much so that even military juntas dictators and the monarchs legitimize their rules in the name of true democracy what they call right so uh, starting from say for example uh, how competitive they are in terms of legitimizing a very different and uh, contradictory uh, system of rule in the name of democracy so for a capitalist or in a capitalist economy a free uh, market economy will um, uh, fight for the protection of the rights and for the democratic rule a society which believes in the collective ownership or the state ownership of properties or national resources will fight that capitalist or what they call bourgeois democracy in uh, the name of bringing true democracy or more genuine democracy and so on so this idea has a kind of legitimizing effect in the modern times and uh, to call someone undemocratic is seen as a kind of offensive or so everyone want to present themselves or profess themselves as a democratic person however there are many challenges and criticism to democracy even today so democracy is basically also equated with majoritarian rule the majoritarian rule is arithmetically speaking the rule of 50 plus 1 so in a society of 100 the one who has the vote of 51 will have the uh, right to rule and govern now this kind of democracy is also related to the tyranny of majority and the rights and the uh, property of the minority is always at danger in this tyranny of majoritarian rule in a democracy which is based on the number the other criticism of uh, democracy is that it do not distinguish between a person who is uh, well qualified educationally and a person who is illiterate 
Now, in a democratic rule, you have this idea that one person, one vote, one vote, one value. This one person, one vote and one vote, one value do not make a distinction between a person who is a uh, say PhD or a person who is a illiterate. The vote of each one of them is same. So, it does not make a distinction between the educated or qualified and uneducated or unqualified. So, these are the, some of the other criticisms of democracy. However, the idea that people should run themselves is not uh, new. This idea that uh, the government should be based on the interest of the people and people themselves should participate in uh, governance is not new. Around uh, 2500 years ago in ancient Greece, the people of the Greek city or city states of Athens developed a way of making decisions that was different from the autocracy, the features of uh, in autocracy or autocratic rule we have discussed. Plato and Aristotle saw democracy at work in some of the ancient Greek city states, especially in Athens and its salient features were equal participation by all free men, this point we will uh, discuss in a minute. So, equal participation of all men in the common affair of the police or that is also called city states, which was regarded as the essential instrument of good life. So, a good life is a public life, uh, life in the police is regarded as a good life where the participation in the uh, common affair of the police or the city states was available or given to all free men in Athens. B arriving at uh, decisions in an atmosphere of free discussion. So, the decisions were taken through discussions and not through coercion and not through uh, uh, you know whims and fancies of a few person or one individual. Third, the general respect of for law and for the established procedures of the community. So, the Greeks took pride in their customary law and admiringly distinguished it from the arbitrary rule prevalent among the barbarians. So, why they call themselves as civilized is precisely because they conducted their rule through procedures by the procedures that is established in the community in contrast to the arbitrary rule of the barbarians where the whims, fancies and passion largely drive the politics and the governance. So, the corner stone of Athenian democracy was the direct and the continuous participation. You can well understand the democratic nature of this rule by this uh, definition of citizenship in Aristotle which we will discuss later on also when we will discuss citizenship that citizenship is ability to govern and be governed in turn. So, this is a very thick notion of citizenship where the citizen is not just the subject of rule, but equally capable of ruling himself or herself. So, that is the hallmark of citizenship uh, or democracy in Athenian city states, Greek city states certainly in Athens. However, the form of democracy prevalent in ancient Greek city states was by no means regarded as an ideal rule. Why? Because Athens was not a true democracy as women were not included nor foreigners, slaves and freed slaves. So, the uh, citizenship or the participations were limited only to the male uh, citizens of the cities and not the women, foreigners, slaves and so on. So, the democracy was only for a small minority of the people living in Athens and therefore, we cannot regard the Athenian democracy as the ideal democracy. However, the ideal of common good as independent of and prior to individual interest and desire was very much strong in the uh, governance of the city states. Similarly, in Republican Rome, some of the democratic ideas were quite popular. For example, popular participation, public good, civic virtue, citizenship and codification of law. So, these are some of these ideals which can be regarded as a uh, modes of democratic uh, ideals or democratic ways of functioning, which was also very popular in Republican Rome. 
in medieval England and that is the beginning of modern constitution and democracy. In 1215, King John had total control and his subjects had no freedom uh, or say in the administration whatsoever. So, in 1215, there was a kind of complete control of monarch over the administration. The Magna Carta took some of the king's power away and gave some rights and freedom to the people. The Magna Carta which contains 63 clauses promising all free men access to the courts and a free trial, eliminating unfair fines and punishments and giving power to the Catholic Church in England instead of the king. So, the Magna Carta was an important milestone in British law and would become the basis for many international constitution including the Australian constitution. So, the Magna Carta begins this process of asserting certain rights and like the idea of free trial or removing some uh, arbitrary or unfair fines and punishments and so on becomes the basis for the uh, emergence of modern democratic uh, constitution. The American revolution was another milestone in the making of modern uh, democratic government. So, in the declaration of independence written by the American president Thomas Jefferson in 1776, many ideas were taken from two famous philosophers, uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau and John Locke, which outlined freedom and equality and we have referred to their ideas in uh, the previous lecture. So, the guiding principle of American constitution was that the rule is based uh, on the consent of the people. So, it starts with we the people. So, the legitimizing authority for the state and its institution is the people of uh, the United States. And also, there are certain rights of the citizens which must be protected. So, uh, this American constitution becomes the another milestone in the making of modern democratic states and constitution. So, modern democracies developed throughout the 20th century. Held wrote that the historical changes that contributed to the emergence of modern liberal and liberal democratic thought were immensely complicated. Struggles between monarchs and states over the domain of rightful authority, peasant rebellions against the weight of excessive taxation and social obligation the spread of trade, commerce and market relations, changes in technology, particularly military technology, growing influence of renaissance culture, religious strife, struggle between church and state all played a part in the making of or in the expansion of democracy throughout the 20th century. So, this uh, definition by held gives us a broader social political, economic and religious struggle that was going on and together these constitute a system of rule which we now call a democratic rule. So, this is the result of the historical changes that contributed in the emergence of modern liberal or liberal democratic thought. However, those were complicated and the struggles between monarchs and the states over the domain of rightful authority, peasant rebellions against the weight of excessive taxes and social obligation, the spread of trade, commerce and market relations, changes in technology, particularly military technology and growing influence of renaissance culture, religious strife and struggle between church and state all played a part in the emergence of such liberal thought or liberal democratic thought. So, democracy have resulted from wars, revolution decolonizations and economic uh, circumstances. So, many people argue that the capitalism or the prosperous society produce the conducive uh, atmosphere for the functioning of democracy, whereas if a society is economically backward, it will lead to a lot of undemocratic hierarchical system of rules and governance. So, there is the historical sociological uh, explanation for the growth and expansion of modern democracy in 20th century and through held we get some uh, some of these things. And other things that we need to keep in mind that the struggle for democracy is constantly inclusive and ever expanding. So, it does not limit uh, with uh, you know 
uh, once for all. So, it is a kind of constant inclusion. So, for example, in US, the rule was based on the people, but that people is regarded as the white people. So, for the black to get political participation took a long time to a struggle and finally, after the struggle of centuries, they get their right. And even when they get the legal political right, their social and economic equality took a another centuries and still that struggle is uh, going on. Similarly, for the women to participate in the political process in the country took a long struggle and the history of modern democracies is a result of such struggles which constantly expand the political process. So, John uh, Dunn coming back to this uh, debate on democracy argues that all states today profess to be democracies because a democracy is what it is virtuous for a state to be. So, all uh, states or modern state will profess themselves to be democratic because it is virtuous to be democratic today. So, as I said that democracy has acquired a legitimizing capacity where it is seen as uh, in negative sense if somebody is called undemocratic. So, all states now profess democracy or democratic because they are uh, virtuous to be. So, thus now it becomes easier to associate everything that is good and virtuous to democracy and that makes the concept of democracy very confusing. So much so that in 1960s when Robert Dahl tries to study uh, democracy scientifically, he prefers the term polyarchy to democracy because everything is seen or associated which people or the uh, community believes good or virtuous with the democracy. Democracy is often interpreted in a sense where it seems that even the contradictory ideas and values are regarded as the essential features of democracy. So, for example, the majority rule or individual rights or limited government or popular sovereignty, similarly private property or the collective ownership of property participation that means direct participation or through representation, collective or the individual, socialism or the capitalism, these are some of these contradictory ideals. But in democratic theorization or understanding, all these uh, contradictory elements are often seen as the essential feature of a democracy. And therefore, George Bernard Shaw once proclaimed that democracy seems to be everywhere and nowhere. So, what is real democracy? Even when, uh, when one professes themselves or uh, when the state profess itself to be a democratic state, is it really democratic and how far it is democratic? And uh, that remains and opens up a lot of uh, contested arguments, uh, questions and challenges. And George Bernard Shaw uh, gives a sense of this um, uh, dichotomy, this uh, confusion about uh, this term democracy where everyone seems to profess democracy even when many of them are not practicing it in uh, reality. Now, if you look at the key features of um, or a characteristic of democracy, we find that the defining feature of democracy is that in the system of rule it is the people which is regarded as supreme and according to Anthony Arb Luster, democracy refers to a situation where power and authority ultimately rests with the people and not with the government. So, that is the defining feature of democracy that is a system of rule. It regards people as the supreme authority or holder of power. So, government therefore, then is based on the consent of the people. So, the main basis of democracy is liberty and equality. The people enjoy maximum liberty and equality because criticism of people is not only tolerated in this system, but it is also encouraged. So, the democracy is a system of rule which uh, um, provides the citizen a scope to criticize the action of the government. No other autocratic or undemocratic government will allow the citizen to criticize their government because they must obey or their existence depend on their loyalty to the monarch or to the dictator. But democracy as a system of rule permit 
and also encourage the citizen to criticize the government. In monarchies, dictatorship, aristocracies and oligarchies, the people and the opposition party have hardly any role or no say at all in the matters of national importance, whereas in a democracy you have the scope for such uh, criticism and even the role of opposition parties in the national importance. In democracy also the emphasis is on this idea of political equality where every citizen is granted this right to vote and that granting of right to vote do not discriminate between educated or uneducated, literate or illiterate, propertied or not propertied and so on. So, um, uh, this adult franchise is based on this idea of one man, one vote and one vote, one value is the basis of political equality in a democracy where public offices is open for all. So, this uh, gives uh, the uh, other characteristic of uh, a democratic state. And citizen in a democracy is given certain rights which must be protected and the functioning democracy promote diversity of opinion and interest, freedom of speech and expression and also the right to protest and resist. An independent judiciary is the hallmark of a democratic government. So, uh, these are some of the characteristics. John Austin, James Bryce, A. V. Dicey, John Silly and A. L. Lowell classified democracy chiefly as a form of government. Lowell, for instance, argued that democracy is only an experiment in government. Silly describes it as government in which everyone has a share. Dicey in his famous work, Law and Opinion uh, in England, treated democracy as a uh, form of government under which majority opinions determines legislation. According to him, it would be unwise in a democracy to enforce law not approved by the people. So, in all of their argumentation, the democracy is seen as a system of government or as a system of rule. Now, the system of that rule is based on the people and their participation and uh, Dicey goes on to explain that uh, even the legislation and the law which do not have the approval of the people, it will be unwise to enforce them on the people. So, the sanction or the approval of people is necessary for the making of the government, for making of the laws and implementing those laws in a society. Now, the other dimension or the feature of uh, democracy is its ever expanding process. So, uh, the democracy in modern times emerged from a limited and restricted government and from that limited and restricted government, it becomes ever inclusive and ever expanding form of government. So, uh, let us take the example of this vote. Uh, when modern democracy started, this right to vote were given to only white male or educated member of the community white, male or the educated and property member of the community. But there was the struggle for uh, expanding or making the uh, democracy more inclusive and now it includes the female, unproperted, illiterate, marginalized such as uh, Dalits. So, uh, the other dimensions and that is the most crucial dimension of democracy is it started with a limited and restricted form of government and now it is ever expanding or ever inclusive those groups who were excluded from the process of governance or from the participation in the decision making and therefore, it includes newer and newer groups such as female, unpropertied, illiterate or the marginalized sections in the society. Now, very briefly we will discuss direct and indirect form of democracy and finally, uh, procedural and substantive notion of democracy. So, modern democracy largely works through its representative institution. So, that means people in a large uh, uh, country and uh, with a vast number of uh, people cannot take direct participation in day to day basis in governing themselves. So, they govern through their representative and representative are accountable to the people and this form of government called indirect government. But we also have the instances where people directly participate in the uh, making of collective uh, uh, decisions. So, modern democracy largely works through its representative institution. Uh, 
In order to understand its functionings, it is essential to distinguish between direct and indirect democracy. So, direct democracy means the rule by the people of uh, a state, town or other political community by means of direct participation. So, physically people go and participate in the decision making themselves and not through their representative. So, some examples of direct democracy are for an ancient Greek city states, also in ancient India some uh, Buddhist Sangha or republics did practice uh, this direct democracy. The Gram Sabha in modern times in the village panchayat is the example of direct democracy where every male member who has the right to vote is also member of the Gram Sabha. So, Gram Sabha taking collective decision is the example of direct democracy in contemporary times in India. So, this system can obviously operate in an area having a small number of citizens who can periodically meet at one place. Today, when large and complex societies have emerged, when area is very vast and extensive, direct democracy is impractical or impossible and this system, uh, this system here means direct democracy prevails only in the four cantons of Switzerland. Indirect democracy, in a representative or indirect democracy, the will of the state is formulated and expressed not directly by the people themselves but by their representative. So, the people govern themselves in indirect democracy through their representative. John Stuart Mill had said in this regard that indirect or representative democracy is one in which the whole people or some numerous portion of them exercise the governing power through deputies periodically elected. So, uh, this idea of periodic election of uh, the representative of the people is to ensure that uh, the representative represent the will of the people or the voice of the people. Another writer Blunt Sill uh, has said in the representative democracy the rule is that the people govern through its officials while it legislates and controls the administration through its representative. So, it is basically modern uh, nation uh, state which is also a democratic state where we represent the ministers, but we govern ourselves in day to day basis by recruiting the officials and these officials which we can call bureaucracy which is permanent executive in, in a sense that we do not elect them periodically, we recruit them, but overall these bureaucracy or the officials functions in the uh, uh, overall supervision of the elected representative like ministers and so on. So, Burns will characterize this representative uh, democracy where people govern through its officials while it legislates and controls the administration through its representatives, the MPs or MLAs that we elect. So, this type of government was established in England in 17th century, in France in 1830 and Italy in 1941. In Germany, it was established after the First World War according to the Weimar constitution. Again, this system was established in the West Germany after the Second World War and uh, today this system is seen in many countries like Japan, Sri Lanka, India, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United States of America, West Germany, Italy, France, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Austria and Belgium. In modern times, the term democracy is also used as synonym to representative government. So, this form of government prevails in most of the countries in modern times. Now, finally, the procedural and substantive uh, forms of uh, democracy, there are broadly speaking two ways of defining democracy, one is procedural, the other is substantive. Procedural democracy is about free and fair election, fair competition among political parties and political equality. And so, the procedural democracy is about uh, a set of procedures followed by any country such as free and fair election, fair competition among the political parties and political equality. Whereas, substantive democracy is about a system of government whereby the people's will included into the programs and from the functioning of the government. So, it may be possible that a country has procedural democracy, but it lacks substantive democracy. So, and it is also possible that it may lack the both and yet it may profess itself as a 
democracy. Suppose if a country is governed by one party and there is no competition in election, so what kind of democracy that country is? So those are some of the challenges which we will discuss in the next lecture. But here in the procedural uh, uh, democracy, you understand that the, there are certain procedures such as free and fair election, fair competition among the political parties and political equality, freedom of press and so on is regarded as the uh, characteristic of procedural democracy. Whereas substantive democracy talks about whether the functioning of the governance or the programs of the governance reflect the will of the people or not or empower or strengthen the will of, uh, of the people or not. So, procedural democracy is a democracy in which people or citizens of the state have less influence than in the traditional liberal democracy. This type of democracy is characterized by voters choosing to elect representatives in free elections. Substantive democracy is a form of democracy in which the outcome of election is representative of the people. So, in other words, substantive democracy is a form of democracy that functions in the interests of the government. Although a country may allow all citizens of particular age to vote, this characteristic does not necessarily qualify it as a substantive democracy. So, merely by fulfilling those procedural uh, criteria, a country cannot be regarded as a democratic country. In substantive democracy, the general population plays a real role in carrying out its uh, political affairs. For example, the state is not merely set up as a democracy, but it functions as uh, one. So, it is not just enough to have free, fair and periodic election, but it is also uh, necessary to ensure that the decisions are taken through discussion and there are popular participation in decision making and the decision that is taken is the interest of the governed and also reflect the will of the people. So, democracy may have elections procedural, but may lack the rule of law and civil liberty which is about the substantive uh, uh, democracy. So, this is common in many uh, dictatorships where elections are held or even rigged and the dictator is conveniently elected. So, it is easy to have law and a constitution, the framework or the procedures which proclaim democracy as the guiding principle of government, but that does not mean a country actually operates democratically. That is, the country is democratic in substance. So, that is something about the substantial notion of democracy which is far more than merely the procedural uh, uh, democracy. All substantive democracy therefore, are procedural democracy. So, in all the substantive democracy you have free and fair election uh, besides uh, the functioning of the government on the basis of will of the people, but not all procedural democracies are substantive democracy. So, election may be held but there will not be independent judiciary and there will not be any civil liberties. So, it is possible to have a procedural democracy without substantive democracy, but all substantive democratic country is also a country which also follow the procedural democracy. That means, free and fair election, uh, open competition for positions or uh, independent judiciary, free press, so on and so forth of the procedural uh, notion of democracy. So, that is all for uh, today's lecture. You can refer to some of these books like Jan Ki Srinivasan, Democracy in Rajiv Bhargav and Ashoka Charya Political Theory and Introduction and these are also the books which we have been uh, referring to in other uh, topics which you should also look at if you want to study more on uh, the topics which we have covered in this lecture. So, that is all for today's lecture. Please write to us your uh, feedback, your queries and comments we will be happy to respond. So, thanks for listening. Thank you all.